Hello and welcome to the Angus Report, a news program that's geared specifically toward cattle producers. I'm Bob Cervera. And I'm Paige Wallace. We come to you from the American Angus Association headquarters in St. Joseph, Missouri, in the heart of rural America. We begin with the week's top headlines, including lingering floodwaters in the Midwest. We then head south, where severe drought has fueled what's becoming an extensive hay shortage. And we'll take a look at how accelerated cattle liquidation in the region will affect ranchers in the short and long term. Plus, DNA goes beyond crime scene dramas. How genomic data is used to create the latest genetic selection tools. This is the Angus Report. Our top story for the week. This summer's historic Missouri River flooding submerged almost half a million acres of farmland and displaced livestock across the plains. Widespread flooding caused by heavy snowpack and a rainy spring also forced residents from their homes and rerouted trains and motorists along the nation's longest river. But while the Army Corps of Engineers has reduced releases from upstream reservoirs, floodwaters in many states are expected to remain high into the fall. You look at Texas with, with uh, weeks in a row of triple digit temperatures and, and then uh, we got into a point right here where we had flooding on the river, but yet we couldn't get a rain. And uh, what, a, what a frustration it's been to, to see, you know, one extreme to another. With river levels like we're seeing here, it's going to be years before we're able to, uh, to get the levees rebuilt. Um, there's, there's some of this crop ground that'll, that'll probably never return to crop ground again. Just uh, too much trash and too much silt um, been dumped on top of the ground. So this one probably has a longer term effect than what the flood of 1993 did. Governors from seven states affected by Missouri River flooding have requested the Army Corps of Engineers review its river management practices to improve flood control measures. The Corps currently manages nine dams along the river, which flows from Montana to Missouri. From flooding to drought, weather conditions have taken their toll on hay supplies, according to the USDA. Reduced hay acreage and poor growing conditions in many regions have cut estimated hay yields to levels not seen since the late 80s. Hay availability varies widely by region. While supplies will likely remain ample in northern states, ranchers in the drought-stricken south are already using winter reserves. Supply is quickly becoming a concern. Uh, to put it in perspective, nationally you'd have to go back to the Midwest drought conditions in that 1988-1989 time frame. We had tight stocks to begin with and if you'd have normal levels of demand you're going to have probably the tightest year-end stocks on record. So I mean this would go back this would go back as far as Ag Stats has records on this. Contact these resources for more information or to assist those needing hay and feed. Dry conditions have also spurred increased cattle liquidation across drought-stricken areas, causing an influx in feeder cattle and cow sales. USDA's Corbett Wall discusses how weather, corn yields, and other factors will play a role in fall cattle markets. It looks like corn's gonna, corn market's going to be awful good right during harvest. And so uh, the guys are worried about that. Cattle feeders are worried about that. But at the same time, those cattle that are being fed right there during that harvest time and in the fall, those cattle are going to coincide with your highest uh, futures market for fed cattle, which is in April right now. And they're so excited about those fat cattle markets that are forecasted for April. They're not so concerned about the corn right now. They're more concerned with hay or forage to get them to that point. Additional USDA Market News is available at marketnews.usda.gov. Cow herd liquidation happening in the Southern Plains could go well into the fall. As Daryl Peel with Oklahoma State University explains, the phenomenon could have a long lasting effect on the nation's already diminished cow herd. You know, 2011 probably would have been the year nationally where we would have at least stabilized after liquidating for several years and, and begun the process of rebuilding. Now as it is, the drought in this area is, is sufficient to, even on a national scale, force us into additional liquidation that we didn't plan on. So it definitely postpones any rebuilding by at least one year. And realistically, given how tight female numbers are, it, it probably pushes off the, the longer term rebuilding to where we want to get to eventually by more than one year. Uh, so next year, 2012 at best, before we can even stabilize the numbers and think about any kind of rebuilding. 
Every year, the more than 30,000 American Angus Association members elect delegates to represent their respective states at the organization's annual meeting. Delegates elect board directors and conduct association business during the November event in Louisville, Kentucky. It's a time-honored tradition that sets the course for the Angus breed. Today I was one of two election observers that came to the association and what we did was we opened all the ballots that came in which was about 4,200 ballots from members across the country and we determined if those ballots were eligible to be counted, to be scanned by the scanner and then counted and what we, what we oversaw was the election of delegates which is those people who will be going to the annual meeting in Louisville and then electing our board of directors. A complete list of delegates is available online at angus.org. Purebred and commercial producers are invited to attend a popular beef industry educational event. The Cattlemen's Boot Camp presents timely information presented by academic and industry professionals and features hands-on labs for both beginning and experienced cattle producers. Cattlemen's boot camps are just a great one and a half day learning opportunity for all cattle producers of all levels and they're just really good overall um, learning sessions for cattle producers to get a, a, an overview of the beef industry. Boot camps are planned for October 7th and 8th at The Ohio State University and January 20th and 21st at Utah State. Learn more or register online. When the Angus Report continues, we'll see how feeders are sharing carcass data with cow-calf customers. Plus, we head to the National Junior Angus Show, where a young Georgia boy tackles his first big show. First, we take a moment to reflect on one of our nation's darkest moments and to remember the many victims of the September 11th tragedy. This week marks the 10th anniversary of the attacks that shook America and cost thousands their lives. Today, we're reminded of the sacrifices of our fellow Americans and those of the many heroes that risked their lives to save others. To them, we say thank you. Thank you for giving America the courage to rise from tragedy to courage, from loss to strength, and from despair, pride. Thank you. <laughs>